Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Today, featuring a Monday novice fight, yes, indeed, right here in the fields and streets of Angerville, or well, more roads than streets. A one versus one fighting shall be in the northern corner. Ricky 212. O212, fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 3rd Armored Division, opposing him shall be... Midwinterblut, fighting for the Wehrmacht. Fighting for the 2nd Panzer Division, and in fact, let's get right down to it, this is actually going to be a slightly longer game. Despite the amount of novice fighting again, for those who didn't get your game cards, my apologies, I can only choose one game, you know. And certainly some games do have their own issues why I can't cast them and sometimes again, you know, when I get like 10 or 15 or 20 games during a week for some sort of all Monday novice fights, obviously only one can be chosen. In this case I figured this one was reasonably interesting. Highlighted some details I think needs pointing out, but bags going up here and also a note actually, they're about, to f I can't remember the ranks, but right at the edges of his space, the Wehrmacht quarter goes up. So at least he's learned that from the propaganda cast. And looks like his opponent also has. That's nice to see. Pioneer's sort of heading out to either side. Bit spread out. Not sure what unit shall be out there, but rifleman on the way from Ricky, who is going pretty heavily towards the eastern side of the map. He's ignoring the western half so far. We'll have to see how that works out. 3rd armored division, armored division was the American Armored Division to actually suffer the highest losses. Sandbagging up, that's good, but usually you want to sort of place it as close as possible to the fuel point so you can actually take it while you know you're behind cover. You can't hear in this case. And also you don't let down that much sandbags. Usually it's only one bit for the engineers. And also no notice, he can't actually take it. So again, now he has to run out it. Pioneers do run in. In this case, I imagine he'll run right behind the heavy cover. And the Pioneers will be in a bit of trouble versus the Engineers with the Grizz Guns. So in that case, not bad. But again, usually, you usually try to place the sandbags closer to the point you want to take in safety. MG42 out from Midwinter Blut. And again, I mean, classic novice mistake. Not getting infantry first, but instead getting an MG42 and sending it in without knowing what's going on. I mean... In company views, that's bad. In company views, too, we know where we're going to get the true line of sight, whatever that fully means. That's going to be even worse. So, I mean, something like, again, try to get away from it, you know. Always send it first, or at least send it where you know there's not something right in front of it. Like where your pioneers are. Do not send it in on its own, up the road, where you have absolutely no bloody idea what's waiting for you. Now, of course, because he didn't bother warning off the chair, which I'd recommend you do, so they don't just run into this house and take this point. But again, that doesn't really seem to have been into Midwinter Blut's ideas. The American efforts continue, although they're not quite securing as much territory either. And Midwinter Blut continues up here in the west. In the meanwhile, MG42 moves up again. Will he? You know, you might want to use it to support the false gun ideas properly. And then one more rifleman on the way for Ricky. And some more units on the way from that. Also rushing in in front of a building where most of the troops can fire upon you to take a point is generally not considered a good idea either. And again, MG42 in a bad position. And I mean, come on, Midwinter. Do use your head. Folks kind of taking heavy losses because, again, they were taking a point out in the open. Not good at all. In particular, in this close proximity to the units inside the building. So one man down, and the rest are not really in a great fighting condition. So that definitely went to Ricky. Now trying moving in again. Again out in the open, no cover. At least if you're going to do that attack from here and sort of try to be here where there's only two windows where they can fire from. Perhaps even lay down some sandbags there. Sending in the heavily wounded one from the south. No units on the way there. Come on, Midwinter. Ricky. Is he laying down mines? He's got no munitions. He's got some resources, so he must have been laying down mines. And there we go. Laying down sandbags right in front again. Note. While your units are building things, they're also much easier to hit. Just note. 
two went down pretty quickly and again the last two are wounded very badly so again don't do that I mean if you really need Enemy to do it down. use pioneers for it not your own folks kind of ears I mean really you know think about the situation and pioneer team lost over here trying to secure the fuel we do see a bit of mines from midwinter blood but the American and just sort of walks be past down. that not really looking good for midwinter Pioneers hanging about, doing nothing. Infantry pretty wounded, MG42 not really achieving much either. Getting a third team, it looks like. I'll get this other reinforce and get them up to the front. Counter attack swiftly, quickly. Ready to fight, sir. Without mercy. But apparently that doesn't even seem to be within his plans so far. Again. Monday novice fight, so if you are weak of nerves, then turn your eyes and gaze away. And if you're going to be staying in the obvious of these are novices, then again, why? Anyways, we are seeing right from moving in, we're going to be getting a bit of an engagement here. Will the folks going to be able to take up cover? Come on, Dekong and Dekong. Right from moving in, out in the open. Come, stay in cover! Stay, oh for heaven's sake! Not really doing well here, right from the hiding side there. What is he going to do? Nothing, it seems like, either. You could be laying down sandbags while waiting for them to attack. I mean, in this case, sandbags would be an alright thing, but no. Rifling coming under fire. Come on, move up the others to support. No, Rifling pulling out. Charging in here, and he's getting into the shed. I mean, wooden sheds, for example, don't really provide as much cover as a building. Fun fact then, also note... You can only have one man firing out of the window, for heaven's sake. I mean, again, that's also as I sort of tried to teach you, not really effective either for infantry. For an MD, alright, but for infantry, not really good at all. Right from getting scorched a bit right there. Folks can see able to actually get two gunners at them, so that's something, I suppose. Right from actually abandoning the building, that's Losing ground fancy. Oh, there's also window up there. Sort of hiding up there, trying to... Get away from his duties, I suppose, but not what I would call fully effective. A flamethrower would actually have been a better choice in that building, I think, but either way, they can get out now, get the moving midwinter. Finding continuous here. Rifen pushing onwards, once more dodging that mine. Rifen pushing hard at the Fox Gunners, one man down, the others need to get out of there. Ruxuk! Come on, get them out of there. They're down to two men, and they're not very healthy. Too late! Enemy unit down. Unit preservation and know when to get your units out of there. Come on. Do try to watch the propaganda cast. MG42 pulling up. But at least finally taking this point. This one's still not doing much. I mean, you have to be careful about just leaving units about in a building like that. I mean, usually you get much better things out of them if you actually use them to sort of harass the opponent to cover new flanks. I mean, otherwise, again, it also sort of presents the problem that your opponent knows what's going on and can thus easily form a solution to it beforehand. Which, again, is something you want to avoid right from hiding there. The bit wounded, MG42 moving up. We're seeing veterans out for midwinter blood, but we're not seeing a creek bags. Come on. You've not seen a single upgrade, and already we are seeing a motor pool on the way. You're too slow, midwinter blood. Too bloody slow. And you've already lost an infantry team. This is not really looking good for you. Rather than hitting the flank, come on, turn the MG, turn the MG. Just turn it, don't pull it back. It's too late now. These false guys need to get out of there. Ruxuk. Rather than running into it, but they are getting right past it. Come on, get it all out of there. Retreat. Finally. Bags going up, but the motor pool is already up. When I seeing the first armored car coming out, oh dear, this is not going to be pretty for me, Winter Blue. But let's speed things up while he's trying to get his act together for the fatherland. One lone false country moves out. Come on, you've got it. Build something, do not reinforce units first. I mean, again, if you see nothing, expect an armored car again. No upgrades on the riflemen, no BARs grenades or anything expect armored car don't sit about waiting for it and already now we are seeing the armored car rush and of course he has nothing in his base to stop it he's not even bothered mining this area which again tends to be the very good thing to do when an armored car tries to rush in but 
Midwinter Blue seems oblivious. Utterly. Laying down a. No, he apparently didn't actually manage that. Something went wrong. The sword going in here. Full splits with MP40s. Pioneers with flame flames. Other things. American charging right into all of this. He's blobbing up. Oh, and there's an MG42. That's good, at least for Midwinter Blue. Full retreat. Armored car finding the pack. But of course, the pack's just getting ambushed. Flanked quite easily. And again, there's absolutely no support for it. And that ends up with a very dead pack crew. They're taking one of our Come on, points. meet Winter Blood. Do try to pretend you're in the game. Grenadiers on the way. Armor cars blasting away. This building's not doing too much, although all right against the bunker. Moving in against the cutoff point. Mines there, that's good. Grandiers ready. Getting dual panzer strikes in this case. I can and say that's alright. Since he desperately needs something. Greyhound mine right at the pack. That's a good thing. But again, usually there should have been a mine there in the first place so the American armor car could have hit that. And this one hasn't even been upgraded. Oh dear, this would be a nice target if Midwinter Blood would push for that. Rather from charging out once more, MG42, too far away, need to support the frontline troops. I mean, here would be a nice spot, or here, get move. Sandbags, don't spread them out. Ah, uh, Grenadiers moving in with a panzer trick. Nice hit there on the one armored car, almost down again, you want to upgrade them. Banger could be going down, though. False Grenadiers here need to retreat. Retreat, ow! Again, don't spread false guns out like that. They need support from other units. <laughs> oh, the Grenadiers hit the Greyhound mine. Down to one man with very little health. If the Greyhound catches him, he's going to be dead. But already mid Winter Blood is being bled dry himself. Again, not really a good situation. He said he also needs to change with Grenadiers. Then quickly, Chanel. You could also hide in the building there for a bit of protection. There we go. Greyhound down, the other one could be going down as well. A th armored half track arrives to transport the infantry. Holy devils, apparently. Armored car gets persuaded. These Grenadiers need a medic pack. Or something if they're to continue the fight. And these Volksmans also need to get moving again mid bits of blood. Too little is happening. Much too little. More grenadiers on the way though, that is good. Armor car needs to consider getting out of there. Before the Panzerix get it. And again, don't blob up, don't blob around points. Try to take as much territory as possible. Really a novice mistake right there. And you could use those pioneers to salvage the Armored car break for munitions for your war machine. Come on, Midwinter. Always salvage if you can, and you're clearly not doing that. Grenadiers here. Yes, also to note, the Common Infused 2 sign is now up. Again, follow my Twitter, I posted a bit there. Looks alright, Forum is still the same, although that's probably going to change. But we do get a sort of tiny screenshot, although not a proper one. We can see some details, we can see a Panzer IV in white. We can see some T-34s, later model of the C-76 variant. And I think we might also be seeing some Germans in great coats, although that's a bit hard to see. Pulling back towards here. Where are your grenadiers? Come on, move them in. Keep them together. And why haven't you recruited that pack in the first place? We're now going for the pace drive here, getting suppressed, perhaps by the MG. Yes, indeed. Americans going straight for the base once more. Where are the grenadiers for the Panzer Shrex? Come on. Really, Mid Winter Blood, your reaction time is appalling. The way with which you react being far from sufficient and rather giving Ricky 2012 a lot of advantages, a lot of opportunities, which you are taking, which is good. Ah, my car getting blasted with the Panzerick rounds and ooh! <laughs> Quad mount on the half track. That's going to be a problem, although armor car could be going down. Main gun down, although the half tank of course might be coming down. Oh, the anti-tank gun got wrecked. 
Another Panzer Vic round, come on, or a Panzer Faust. Lots of them though for these Panzer Grenadiers. Not a lot to really deal with the infantry. Rifleman charging in with BARs, so that's a really nasty force right there. Grenadiers and Fulskars doing where they can. Oh, Ricky now suffering loss of his own. And grenade thrown too far, be careful with that. And the American commander continues to 22 on the way, that's really going to benefit. Rifle, no need to get out of there. Come on, Ricky, don't lose your veterans. You want rifle? Now he's losing his own men in terrible ways to the MP40 equipped Fulz Grenadiers, who you should definitely not be underestimating. Come on. Ow. Oh. That was almost three entire riflemen teams. That's about as bad as it gets. Come on, get that. Going for the armor car, not the half check, which we've gotten with one Panzer Shrek. Really an absolute mess at this stage of the fight. Both players rather bungling up heavily, but still, some alright ideas. Vets 22 for the infantry, that's good, going to make them tougher. Armored car out of control. Now get some pioneers, get to salvaging, and get those pioneers out of that building. They won't be doing anything good there. Half tech also needs to consider getting out of there before the panzer shakes arrive and turn it into mince meat. Oh well, scrap metal. Does get a few troops as it makes a quick escape down the central road. Quite bloody that, and let's speed things up while they pull things together. Another grenadier team, at least he's getting some replacement troops. A really lot of losses for Ricky as well. Two infantry teams down. That's quite bloody. Getting a bit too many panzerics, I think. Whoops, wrong button. I'm getting suppressed by the MD42. Now with that one, that's actually good. Increases accuracy. We like to see that. And a strafing run. Oh, pinning and killing two grenadiers right here. So they're trying to go for the fuel point of Ricky, who's actually now going for the tank depot himself. Third armor division also had this sort of fortune, I suppose, or misfortune to be the armor division to really have lost the most armors. Really, it suffered the highest losses of any American armor division. 300% just in tanks. And they had about. A bit over 300, so that's actually a division that lost 300 tanks throughout the war. Possibly more. And crew losses were even higher than that. I think we're trolling 600 to 900%. I mean, really, they lost a lot of crews in that division. Sturm army on the way. A fresh pack. Again, armor cars not getting sandwiched. Come on, do that. I know you can. And Volkswagen is left behind for their own devices while the half tech just keeps blasting. Although, oh, it has been repaired a bit. Even gained veterans who won. That's nice. Flying away with this quad mount AA gun. Tanks soon on the way away, yeah. Volkswagen is moving up. The other one's not doing too well, be careful. And I'd also recommend Ricky to get some replacement infantry. Some sort of false guys moving up. Panzer fast on the half track. Oh, Rifman rushing straight into the false kind of the ears. Be careful. Again, MP forties are dangerous up close. In this case it looks like the false guys still lose, although they do take a heavy toll on those Americans, really bleeding them out. And several Grenadiers with dual Panzerics not really achieving much right there on the far western flank. But a Sherman has a right, and if it. Whoops, but if they can ambush it, they can really do a lot of damage with those four Panzerics. But uh, Ricky really needs some infantry, he needs something to replace all that he has lost. And that's a lot. He's apparently floating manpower. Oh dear, and the one thing I don't like to see. And he's getting a tank destroyer. Not really, there's a lot of tanks really for him to find. I mean, the Sherman will just be better pack and caught up here. I mean, he would have been better off just getting more infantry. Get some airborne. Support the assault. And speed past the pack. Don't stand in front of it, you dilt. 
I mean, again, bad armor t tactics right here. I mean, you don't just stop up a Sherman in front of an anti-tank gun. You try to get past it in particular when it's moving, and that was an absolutely a missed opportunity, which resulted in the Sherman getting damaged. Pack no crude. Out. Troops moving in. Grenadiers of LMGs, but where are the ones with Panzer checks? They did not move. Soon enough, Panzer Faust against the Sherman. Sherman needs to retreat. Wuxug Mena. I will get the bloody hell out of there. And also that MG needs to get out of there. No infantry support. What about the half track perhaps to help against an infantry? And anti-tank of course getting recruited. Come on. Ricky. And again, what did I say about parking Shams in front of packs? You don't do it. MG Gunner does go down, but the pack has also done a bit of damage to the Sherman. Turn it around, drive it away, out of line of sight, out of line of sight. There we go, quickly repair it. Tank destroyer rhyming again, but not really much of a reason to have it. And here's with MG moving up. We're losing ground out there. Half track firing away. Grenadiers might want to stay, you know, consider staying out of the line of fire of that half track already there. Suppressed down to half health, not really looking good. Now the rifle charging in support. False guns also getting suppressed. Why on earth are you parking your M10 right there when you know there's a pack, you absolute clock winder? I mean, really? Really, why on earth? That's just poor battlefield awareness. Absolutely unacceptable. Airborne moving towards the western front now. Western flank, no grenades for them, no real further infantry. Again, floating resources. And if he had grenades, he could just have fired up, run past the MG, and then grenaded it. But no, instead, he's getting caught right in front of it, getting gunned down. Much too slow and actually getting moving. Come on, there we go though. Flanking it with the M1 carbine, doing a bit of damage. Although so is the MD crew, in fact. Looks like they are retreating. Second Panzer Division doing alright, but no real Panzers of them as of yet. And a quick reaction force moving towards the west with the Grenadiers and false Grenadiers, LMGs and MP40s. Squad, Take fire. And while we don't know what sort of LMGs will be available to the Germans, at least I hope there will be, at least we do know the Soviets will have their sort of... I can't remember the name of it, but they had sort of a... a pan or whatever as a sort of magazine on top of it. It looked a bit funny. Force Grenadiers charging in. Grenadiers, of course, need to stand still for the LMG to fire, and the airborne quickly push off. Panzer X now also for the Grenadiers. Packs right here in a very odd formation. Not entirely sure why that is pointing that way. Sandbags in a. I'm not sure. Is he trying to make a trench? Could be, I suppose. Assault going in here. Grenadiers and Force Grenadiers holding up. Grenades. Strafing run. Oh, several men going down to that aircraft. Despite the best efforts. And no medic banker for Midwinter Blutz or for Actually I think it's Rickle it says. I hope Rickle would also have benefited greatly from Manic Station, of course. Better preservation of his armored assets. Again, really where he falls flat on his face. MG42 pushed off by some heroic routes, and these need to get banked and reinforce it again. Floating resources is not what you want to do. Again, floating manpower solves nothing. It only means your opponent, if he actually uses his manpower, gets a greater advantage on the battlefield, thus killing yours, and thus meaning ultimately he will have the manpower advantage because you didn't use yours. So again, do not float unless you have something very specific to use it on it. And clearly in this case, he doesn't have anything to use it on. He doesn't have a Pershing he has access to. He can just get Sherm's infantry to so get some of that. Use it for heaven's sake. We're in the shit now. Larger force moving out. Lots of false grenadiers. Vets and C3. 
And some grenadiers also, but veterans of free. No armor again, I don't think he needs to necessarily need that. Now sounding, finally salvaging actually. Finally. Making a pretty heavy push right here, Mr. Rickel with half track and Sherman. And some riflemen who needs to get reinforced. You place them near the half track, get them reinforced. You can use a quart mounted half track to reinforce your infantry still. So do that, why not? Please. Get those packs elsewhere. I mean, this one just looks silly. Getting airdrop 57s, but again, you need infantry, infanterie. You need boots on the ground, mate. Looks like Midwinter Blood is preparing. There we go. Assault breaking in. He might want to sort of try and hit for the flank here. Come on. Low skates. Oh, come on. Much too passive behavior there. Little, little pack moving up. Again, don't move out in the opening, but you cannot versus a half track with a quad mount. Rifleman dueling, not fell in. For did he actually get a crocodile? Oh, Christ. That's not really a highly useful... Oh, bugger me, that was a great strafing run. He lost one false kind of team, I fear. The others are pinned and slightly wounded. Sherman doing a bit of nice work with that, but why a crocodile? Why not just a regular Sherman? Or why grenades? Why not infantry? Anything than a crocodile Sherman? I mean, they're not really known to be doing much. I don't really think that's what you need at the moment anyways either. Pack opening up. And right from the media getting suppressed. Sherman Crocodile getting pummeled by the pack. Quickly pulling back. That rhymes. Pack and back. Not really looking good for those from either as they are getting suppressed. They need to get out of their retreat fully. And again, Rickle needs some goddamn infantry. Half track now on the way for Midwinter Blood. Interesting. But it looks like Riggle has managed to gain the map advantage. He holds both the victory points. He holds most of the map after having pushed off. Probably used to partly due to the at least the presence of the armor, which is forcing Midwinter Blue to be a bit more cautious. Airborne flanking, but again, do they have grenades? Do you have anything that can actually help them? Another Sherman on the way. Pack getting out of their grenades moving forwards. Including some with LMG, so be careful. And again, they need to stand still for them to fire. Quite the missed opportunity there, if you ask me. But also been a nice place for a strafing run, but I don't think he had the resources quite for that yet. He might have waited a bit. Then he really could have damaged those kind of and perhaps got a few squads annihilated. Second Sherm arriving. And again, not entirely sure why he keeps running out there when he knows there's an MG42 waiting for him. I mean, you know, do try to remember where your opponent placed things. Again, battlefield awareness, again, which rather seems to be Rickle's major flaw. And immediately grenades are getting suppressed, they're getting not hit by Sherms, of course the Sherms aren't really there, or the crocodiles are not being forced, that's just getting repaired despite getting hit at, come on, move it. Grenadiers, half track Sherman, Grenadiers in the center really now getting a lot of trouble, they're getting losses. Of course could be moving up with several panzer in hand. And a flame for a half track, what is it with these two people and getting units that can't really hit anything? There's something all with the flame for vehicles that don't rarely get any kills. I mean, you could have gotten a Stuka as a Fuss in this case and done more damage. But treat his own, I suppose. Benadir is taking heavy losses. Sherman, they're not doing too well either, and looks like a Koenigsieg has arrived to support the second Panzer Division. Four Vatsmen now. 
This could be what he needs. Oh, there are several anti tank guns, and the strafing run moves in. Doing quite a bit of damage. King Tiger makes the advance. Let's go look at Meatfins of Bluetooth. Of course, has gone Terra then. Flame for a half track rushes into things as well. Getting three kills. Magnificent. Oh, they're gonna think a rocket launch upgrade would have been better. You know, these stukas of Fusti Wurfram in 40. Would have been of a greater benefit. If you were to inquire me. Advance is right here on the east, which has actually been sort of left alone. If he has gotten any sort of supply drops, you could get a mortar and begin bombarding them out there. For some of that would do great. Again, a bit of a tool of period, but nothing really happens. Mac is pushing forward into the MD42. Half tech heavily damaged. Damage engine. Kane Tiger though proving to be the ever ever the foot and hmm, landing a few more kills there. Rifman. Oh, heavy losses. And seven kills for the half tech all of a sudden. That's nice. Assault by the Gunners right here. LMGs and whatnot. So again, remember for it to hit, it needs to stand still. I mean that for it to fire in the first place. Quite the force assembled right there by Rickle to 12. Two Shermans, two anti tank guns, a crocodile, and a half tank, but he's not really using it. And it's a bit come off to a standoff there. And again, nothing's really happening either. Players being a bit too passive here, if not to say a lot too passive. Panzer Command is up, but there's not really any resource to use it. King Tiger is really draining things out there. Anglin is getting pummeled. Shermans and whatnot. Rifleman. King Tiger moving forwards. And grenades getting locked, but simply too far. And Titan guns need to move up to deal with that King Tiger, otherwise Midwinter Blood is slowly going to win. This fight kind of is. Uh, Rifleman actually secured a Pantrick, but they went down actually. A full infantry team or squad lost for Rick Cole. Absolutely bloody awful. Kenny is getting snapped by the anti tank gun. King Tiger advances again. Huge lack of effort right there by. Riggle to really get that King Tiger and a strafing run on a single Grenadier team. Not really good either. Saved it for a bombing run, used the King Tiger with a bet or something like that. Koenig, Tiger advances. Or the Tiger 2, as it was also known. King Tiger finally took a bit of damage when those anti-tank guns finally joined the fight. But again, Rickel was way too slow to actually get anything going there. Really a lot of mistakes. Although no armor losses, but again, Rickel did suffer infantry losses. That's not really something he's going to easily come himself over. Supply drops getting in. I think he might even... No, the airborne is still there. Bunker up. Several bunkers, in fact, going up. MG bunker going up. Will there be a satchel charge? Who knows? Apparently not. He's too busy. And the airborne, of course, takes some rather severe losses. Morton on 30 caliber ready. Assault moves in. Sherman's up gunned. Come on, Rickle, redeem yourself. Mortar rounds flying, and uh, my apologies for just all the briefness, not much to really comment on. At the time, 
Another share moves in again, waiting in front of a pack. That's the last thing you want to de do. Either you move away from it or towards it. Either way, you move. You do not stand still. <laughs> Finally moving it. This is really looking poor for Rickle. Sherman still in the firing line, come on, and he loses it. Rather than going this, running in again, remember, oh, moving about with an MG42 does nothing. How many times must I repeat this? And looks like there's happening a shift, he's moving away from the western flank, instead of moving towards the east. We are seeing a Panzer IV ready though for mid-winter blood. Let's just beat this up again a bit. And he's rushing in straight in front of the pack. Not sure why like that. For example, again, seemingly forgetting there was a pack there in the first place. I mean, come on, Rick. Cool. Are you intentionally just trying to get the American armor destroyed? Let's just wait. This is not going to be more exciting as it happens slowly. MG finally getting mortared, Grenadiers getting scorched by the crocodile, but it's not really getting much out of or done or killed or anything. In fact, main gun just got destroyed. Knocked out. And I think we saw reconnaissance run right there. Panzer 4, and looks like the flamethrower half check has actually been put together again, moving forwards. Or forwards. Let's go have a look at Rickel. Another. Ooh, looks like a bombing run. Pack goes out, but these troops need to get out of there. They're not really in good condition either. Tank destroyer moving in from the flank. Oh, he's just waiting. Come on, move. Oh, good heavens, Rickel. You're embarrassing yourself. Enemy unit down. Pioneer team went down. Why sending in his anti-tank on his own? And where's the King Tiger? I mean, oh, never mind. Tank destroyer gets a good hit right there from the Panzer Schreck. And looks like he decides to give up. The 3rd Armored Division pulls out. Utterly beaten. And there we go. I mean, lots of things to rather note here. I mean... Poor armor tactics from Rick, really poor armor tactics, poor unit or battlefield awareness. I mean, he constantly forgot where packs were, where MGs were, lost several armor pieces just like that, completely senselessly. He was also much too passive, could easily have been more aggressive in several times, not great use of his tank, anti tank guns either. I mean, really, there were a lot of mistakes right there, and also a lot. And finally, when you had the charge right here, he didn't sort of prepare for a counterattack or things going wrong. So again, a bit too much there. Of course, that's not to say Midwinter Blood was all glory and honor. He, I mean, he also made a lot of mistakes. He was much too slow in the beginning, lost units, which he should not have lost, which should have been retreated. No mines here. I mean, that would have been nice at least. Panzerjacks were much too slow in back, coming back to the base when the second rush came for his base. And again, you know, base rushes aren't necessarily one thing you want to do. But generally, that creek back was much too slow in coming up. That should have been up a lot faster. A lot. Otherwise, you know, poor unit preservation. And again, you know, Grenadiers and LMGs, you know, you have to understand they fire when they're standing still. So don't just move them about. But there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends. And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own. This is Impil Dane saying cheers.